Hello, friends. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Tumblr Deep Dive. Yes, the, the, the Tumblr ban has not killed it yet. I think a lot of people assumed that this series was ending with the whole Tumblr... <laughs> Tumblr is, is becoming unfriendlier to the weird niche communities. They very much still exist, and this one I picked because I think it's a it's an amazing example of just how unhelpful the Tumblr ban has been. You took away our nipples, but this is arguably just as not family friendly. Um, that being said, no shade to this community. I think it's one of the wholesome ones in its own weird, morbid way. So let's just jump into it. So this community I have found under the name Vulture Culture, which in terms of community nicknames, you win. They have their aesthetic together, they have their name together, they know what they're about, and I respect that. Vulture culture problems. That feel when there's been a dead skunk in the bushes by the church up the street since before Christmas, but you can't pick it up because of roadkill laws. Sad face. When you're walking through the woods and you see something white on the ground. SPAWN! <laughs> that is the best use of that that I will ever see. No one can convince me otherwise. Shakes handful of deer teeth like dice. I mean, as you do. It's an average Tuesday afternoon. A possum skull with severe damage from a massive parasitic infection. There's all these little holes in it. That's, that's actually quite interesting. I found this poor critter dead under my shed a few years ago. It was covered in ants, and at first I thought they might have had something to do with the tiny holes bored into every bone in the animal's body. After much more reading and research, it seems that the culprit is a parasite, possibly, <laughs> which can cause thousands of tiny cysts in an animal's body. Ew, but interesting. I have no desire to pick up dead opossums, but this is kind of cool. The aesthetic is cool. You gotta admit, the aesthetic is cool. The teeth shirt is good. I would wear that, okay? Merch! <laughs> I would never steal someone's design. I'm joking, but I need merch ideas. How do you skin birds while preserving the feathers? And there's a helpful little, little gif of how to skin a bird. Hmm, I wasn't sure how to explain it, so I made a super simplified illustrated taxidermy tutorial. There's a lot more to it than this, but this is just the basics of how taxidermy works. The things you learn on tumblr.com! You can't see a nipple, but you can learn how to skin a bird. Family-friendly website with their priorities completely straight. Remembering that you've forgotten a maceration bucket again. What? I'm... <sighs> maceration is defined as the softening and breaking down of skin resulting from prolonged exposure to moisture. Maceration is a bone preparation technique whereby a clean skeleton is obtained from a vertebrate carcass by leaving it to decompose inside. Yep, that sounds that that sounds like the correct one. Um, leaving it to decompose inside a closed container at near constant temperature. This may be done as part of forensic investigation. In most cases, maceration is done on the carcass of an animal for educational purposes. This community is essentially of amateur taxidermists and bone collectors. Got a new cabinet today, and oh my lord! Oh my lord, what I- that is quite the decor. That is quite the decor. I'm not sure how I feel about the taxidermized animals, um, but I do enjoy a good skull, I must say. I have a little- I have a little skull candle. Can't wait to be decomposed. <laughs> yeah, it's tagged dirt core, which- We're gonna go off on this tangent for a second, because I just need to know. <laughs> Gift for you. Transparent opossums. Oh, we love, we love a good transparent opossum. The various tags like this, like farm core, cottage core, grandma core, nature core, it's all like aesthetic, sensory pleasing things. I don't even, I don't know how to define it, but that's... Welcome to my cabin. Peak wholesome tumbler. Everyone's out here talking about the true crime community and shit. Just, just visit this person's cabin instead. It's just as fun, I promise. <laughs> Let's go to taxidermy. A huge stingray in the cleaning bucket. A really big animal to try. What? Or what is this? Dying the dead. The artful science of diaphonization. Oh, there's an Etsy page for this stuff? Okay. Okay, I get it. That's okay. Interesting. So he's trying to do this with a stingray. That looks pretty cool, honestly. Oh, now that's aesthetic goals. I love it. That's not spooky at all. It, your boy needs a, some eyes. Adventures in Taxidermy. This person's dead stuff blog. As you do. 
Oh, skins! This one is also a skin. I just realized it didn't actually include the pick in my last post. This is my favorite of the bunch. He's so soft and chunky. Found these guys in the forest. I'm gonna see if I can get the antlers off the deer. Oh lord. Oh lord. I don't think I can show this on YouTube. That's an actual forest carcass. I found a dead shrew and I'd like to gather its bones. I have been masticating it in covered tub of water on my balcony for a few days now, but I'm wondering if I need to do anything to it. Should I change the water or swish it around or just let it rest and do its own thing? Macerating animals is kind of tricky. You might be able to get the bones from it, but they're going to be super tiny and hard to sort. Just let it sit somewhere warm for a few months and it will be fine. That must be really gross when you open it up after a couple months. Might be a weird question, but here we go. I see a lot of roadkill on my route to and from class, and every time it breaks my heart to see these animals get flattened and decay into nothing. I've always been interested in taxidermy, especially skulls, but I don't know if I have the stomach. How did you get started? Is there any trick to dealing with the gore and whatnot? Or should I just stick to admiring your work? I used to be really queasy when confronted with gore and decay, but I just worked through it. It can be a lot to deal with, and certain smells still manage to make me sick to my stomach, the guts and organs especially, but for the most part, I just try to ignore it. You can also buy a respirator to help with the smell. If you're looking for skulls, roadkill usually isn't the way to go since small animals tend to get pulverized. Try asking trappers, predator hunters, farmers, etc. for nuisance animals or dead livestock they might have laying around. You can also join your state taxidermy association and make contacts with other people to learn from. Wow! This is... <sighs> Tumblr is apparently a very good resource for getting into taxidermy! All right then. I love how tags straight up, like bones, skulls, dead animals, are just fine. 100% suggested to me right there. Admire graphic carcasses all day, but no nipples for you, kids! Even after a few years, the color on this skull is still vibrant as ever. That's fabulous, my dude. That's very cool. Oh! <laughs> you need a little, you need a little glittery, aesthetic, transparent taxidermist. <laughs> oh, this one says... Entomologist! Ooh! When people walk into my room. <laughs> nice. It just makes me happy to see people just unapologetically living their best weird lives. So, that's why I love Tumblr. <laughs> Another actual corpse. Okay. Fun times. Picked up this big guy the other day. Poor thing was found in a pretty high traffic spot on a made road. But it was remark- but it was in remarkably good condition. He's beautiful and is safe and sound behind my fence now, waiting for nature to rot him down before I can collect his bones. I'm sad that he met his end this way, but I'll take care of him now. I took my coyote skull out for a wintry photo shoot. Very aesthetic. Very aesthetic. There's just some scattered bones all over the floor in this person's house. So if you haven't put two and two together, this is my put two and two together motion, apparently. It's called vulture culture because they're collecting carcasses they find that are already dead, just like vultures prey on. Yep. Vulture culture, bird watching nature. Collection overview part four, waterfowl. My dude, you got some nice waterfowl. Collection overview part three, songbirds. Ve this is very organized. This is very... Damn. Damn! You got so many bird skulls! <laughs> Hi, I love your blog so much and I don't want to be annoying, but I don't really know where else to get this info. Anyway, I have two rabbit heads that have been rotting above ground in a pantyhose for exactly two months now. They were completely fresh when I got them, had all the meat, but were skinned. I want to take them out now. How do you think they'll- do you think they'll be clean yet? Hi Anon, thank you so much for the kind words, and please don't fear, you aren't annoying at all. So the whole process goes like this. Acquire specimen. Skin and deflesh. Not entirely necessary, but it does speed things up and make cleaning easier. Remove tissue via maceration. Degrease if necessary, usually is. Whiten, and then you're done. Hope it helps. Best of luck with them. I wonder what the... I wonder what the controversies in this community are. It's hard to find whatever it is. These people all seem to, to get along very nicely and be very, very helpful. Anyone know a good way to skin rat feet? Oh, okay, I think we found the tea. Where other vultures get their collection is none of your business, ooh woo. Yes, it is, motherfucker. <laughs> oh boy. If you are supporting unethical trades or sketchy sources, unlicensed fur farms, Thailand bat harvests. Let's just let's just take in that phrase for a second. Thailand bat harvests, pet grave robbing, 
Trappers using sharp slash painful food traps, poaching, or trophy hunting. It is absolutely my fucking business, and if you are breaking the law by supporting those practices, I will report you without empathy for you, nor your reasons. Question for the vulture culture community. What are your opinions on mix matching skeletons? Often what I find has been obliterated by cars, so I just try and use the best bones from each haul. Do you think it's disrespectful, or do you personally do this? Thoughts? It has 19 notes. Personally, I don't do it. It seems wrong to me to put bones from different animals together. I know they're dead, and it technically doesn't matter, but it makes me uncomfortable. I have no logical reasoning behind it. I just don't like it. Overall, they really do seem to have a respect and appreciation for the animals, and that is ideal. Love the vulture culture community. And this is not a small community at all. I've been filming for almost 40 minutes to an hour, and I feel like I've just skimmed the surface. So if you want to look into this, I guarantee you there is, there's so much material. I'm, I'm shocked that it, it took this long for you guys to bring this to my attention, probably because it's not a, a discoursey community. On this day, there has been no tea spilled, only education and entertainment, and that's A-OK -okay with me. Thank you ever so much for watching. I, I gesture with my pineapple juice aggressively. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I will see you in another video very, very soon, my friends.